dash lane, one password, last pass. Awesome password managers. But did you know that you can have exactly the same functionality for free in your own home lab? Let's talk about that. Hi, my name is Karsten and this is how to install Vault Warden on your home lab. But before we start, don't forget to like this video and to subscribe and to hit the notification bell since it helps. And now let's talk about how to install Vault Warden, what we probably need to have in place before we can do that and how to ensure a bit more security after having finished our installation successfully. Let's get into it. Before we start, let's make sure we know a bit about Vault Warden and we are aligned regarding the prerequisites. First of all, Vault Warden is a true open source project and it is a complete re-implementation of Bitwarden, another open source password manager, which is commercially sold and which has some requirements regarding the infrastructure and the machines. So Vault Warden feels a lot like Bitwarden, but is way lighter on the infrastructure requirements and it is completely free. So there is no commercial offering around that. So then now that we know what Vault Warden is about, let's make sure we have the requirements in place and we need to have two things. A virtual machine with four gigabytes of RAM and say a 20 gigabyte SSD or hard disk and a modern day Linux such as Debian, Ubuntu or whatever you prefer. Secondly, I assume that you already have installed something like Nginx Proxy Manager since we won't cover that in this video. If you haven't, then just install it. And now let's get into the actual installation process. The first thing we want to do is we want to install Docker. For that, we first of all install the prerequisites in our freshly installed Debian VM. Then we make sure that we are able to actually use the Docker packages by importing the key. After successfully having done that, we add required information to our apt sources list file and then we do an apt update. After successfully having done this update, we will install the Docker components and that might take just a few seconds. By the way, you will find everything you need to know listed in the description below. Once Docker is installed, we create a Docker group if it does not exist yet, and then we add the current user to that group. And now we can go and install Docker Compose. So we execute the download and then we just make sure that we can execute Docker Compose properly. Last thing we want to do is to check whether the installation was successful by printing out the versions of Docker and Docker Compose. Awesome, now we can lock off our virtual machine. That was not that hard, wasn't it? So now let's get on to actually installing Vault Warden. And for that, we log in back into our machine. Then we will go and create a folder in which Vault Warden can store its data. In my case, I go with opt slash VW. 
After having created the folder, I will create a second folder, which will store my Docker Compose file. And now I can create the docker-compose.yaml file. Here we just paste a very basic setup. We run the latest iteration of Vault Warden. It will restart automatically. We mount the opt slash VW folder into the data subfolder and we expose ports 80 and 3012. We save that file and then we just use Docker Compose to start our setup. And that just takes a few minutes to download the Vault Warden image. And after the image has been converted into a container and has started, we can check opt slash VW. And here we see that Vault Warden has successfully been installed. So we see several files there. That is exactly what we want to see at this point. Awesome. Okay, now we need to make sure that we can actually access Vault Warden. With just installing it, we would be able to access the Vault Warden installation via browser, but it would only be port 80 and Vault Warden would not allow us to create a user or work with the system when using this port and not having a proxy in front of that. What we need to do is, first of all, obviously open the Nginx Proxy Manager homepage. Then we create a new proxy host. My domain name is off.home.opentech.net. And the scheme for Vault Warden is HTTP. I enter the IP address of the machine and I make sure that port 80 is entered since we are proxying an HTTP connection. Then I head over to the SSL settings and here I select my SSL certificate or I create a new one. I hit save and now my proxy is already configured and I can start working with Vault Warden. Okay, now after Vault Warden has been installed and after we have configured our proxy in front of Vault Warden, we need to actually log into Vault Warden or to be more precisely, first of all, we need to create a user with Vault Warden. So what we do is we open a browser and we enter the address that we have just also entered in Nginx Proxy Manager. Then we hit the register button with Vault Warden. We enter our email address, our name, and we define a strong, truly strong master password. And after we have done that, we hit the submit button. Now we are able to log into our Vault Warden installation and work with it. Perfect. Now we just need to use Vault Warden. So what we need to do is we need to open our browser and then head over to the place where the extensions are stored. In my case with Brave, it is the Chrome Web Store. I search for Bitwarden, I open the detail page and then I just add the extension. Once the extension has been installed, we open its settings. And the first thing we want to do is we want to hit the cogwheel and enter the address of our server. In my case, again, it's off.home.opentech.net. Hit save. And now you just can log in using your credentials you have just created. And from here, it is just a matter of adding some entries and working 
with your newly installed Vault Warden instance. But wait, 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 we are not done yet. We want to make sure that we have a bit more security. So what we want to do is we want to enable two-factor authentication. So we open the World Warden website and log in there. And after having logged in, we head over to the account settings. Here in the security section, we have a two-step login entry. And once we have entered our password, we can just scan the QR code with our authenticator app at the current number there. And then we just hit close and two-factor authentication is active. But what if you already have a password manager? Well, you just can export the data there and import it into Vault Warden. And that is very simple. Open your vault and then hit the tools menu entry. Here you find the import data entry and there you can select the format of the data to be imported and then you will just have to upload the file and all of your passwords are then stored within Vault One. That wasn't that hard, wasn't it? It's pretty straightforward to install Vault Warden. But what do you think? Is Vault Warden a good replacement for those commercial password managers? Or do you rather stay with them? Let me know in the comments below. And while you are there, don't forget to like, to subscribe, and to hit the notification bell, since it helps. Thanks for watching, see you next time, and don't forget, Let's make the world a better place now more than ever. Thanks for dropping by. See you later. Bye.